Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if there was ever a constitutional crisis, it is this. We see that there's a crisis in the political realm where the largest political party is outside the parliament. So their demands cannot be channeled through the parliament. We see there's a crisis between the parliament and the superior judiciary, the Supreme Court, whereby both have questioned each other's credibility and where we see that both the parliament and the judiciary have expressed a lack of confidence in the other. And then there's a crisis at the Supreme Court as well. We see the tensions which have been simmering under the surface of the Supreme Court for the last few years. Those tensions now threaten to conflagrate not only the Supreme Court, but also our democratic dispensation. So if there was ever a constitutional crisis, it is this. And I think because this because of this crisis, we can perhaps no longer look at this dispute and this controversy or this entire situation with a legal lens only. So does Chief Justice Bandeyal have the power to constitute benches? Yes, he does. But are his actions and is the exercise of his discretion conflagrating the court and threatening our democracy? Yes. So I think we can now no longer look at this crisis with a legal lens only. Now, coming back to your question, there is no precedent of the Supreme Court striking down or suspending the operation of a bill before it becomes the law. Now, I've seen that some lawyers and some uh, commentators have perhaps drawn a similarity between this bill and the Hizba bill during President Musharraf's tenure. But I think these comparisons are misplaced because the Hizba bill, the issue of the Hizba bill was referred to the Supreme Court in its advisory jurisdiction. So when a law or a bill is referred to the Supreme Court in its advisory jurisdiction, that is distinct from this case. So conceptually, there are two forms of judicial review that the Supreme Court has. The Supreme Court has the power of abstract review and the power of concrete review. In our constitutional dispensation, the Supreme Court's advisory jurisdiction is the only form of abstract review that the court has where the court may annul a law or declare a law to be unconstitutional before it has passed. Because the president is asking the Supreme Court whether or not the president can ratify or give his assent to a bill. So in that situation, where the president seeks the Supreme Court's advisory opinion, in that case, the Supreme Court may perhaps pass some observations with respect to a bill. But in this situation, where the Supreme Court, where this dispute was not referred to the Supreme Court by the president, and where the Supreme Court was not exercising its advisory jurisdiction, in this particular situation, the Supreme Court's actions are completely unprecedented. And given that this bill seeks to regulate the Chief Justice's unfettered powers, the Supreme Court's alacrity is perhaps even more disconcerting. So I believe this is unprecedented. And the Supreme Court has virtually, through the order passed yesterday, done two things. Number one, the Supreme Court has essentially passed a restraining order, restraining the parliament from legislating, which is the primary function of the parliament. And number two, the Supreme Court, insofar as it says that the bill prima facie uh, seems to be attacking the independence of the judiciary under the guise of regulating the court's practice, the court and the eight member eight judges who were a part of the bench yesterday have also shown their mind. So on the very first day, the court has granted the final relief. The court has suspended the bill and the court has perhaps also expressed its mind on the very first day, thus also raising questions about uh, the, the, the right to fair trial of the Federation in this case. Well, I think uh, that is a challenging question because any option available with the government only threatens to raise the political tensions and threatens to raise the temperatures. Any confrontation between the court and the executive would not help anybody. I think it is about time that the Supreme Court also takes a step back. And I think it's about time that the Supreme Court constitutes a full court to address all these issues. And I think the Supreme Court yesterday's order is perhaps also an implicit act it's an implicit declaration of war, not only against the parliament and the executive, but also amongst judges of the court who have been emphasizing on the importance of having uh, an objective criteria. 
an objective cri- criteria pursuant to which benches are constituted so i think these demands have not only been raised by the political actors these demands are demands to structure the chief justice's discretion these demands have also been raised by judges of the apex court so let us not disregard that so i think the chief justice's actions yesterday where he and seven other judges termed any reformation of the chief justice's discretionary powers terming such reforms unconstitutional the court has not only given a message to the parliament but has also given a message to the other members of the bench so perhaps no solution can be forthcoming unless there is consensus amongst the court so i think as a fair step it is about time that the chief justice chief justice bandial is known to be a consensus maker but unfortunately during his tenure we have seen a rupture in the court itself so i think it is about time that chief justice bandial endeavors to create a consensus in the court and i think without any consensus in the court not only will we see an escalation of these tensions but with every passing day we see the supreme court's credibility also erode